Whether you're an experienced Total War Arena Elephant player, or a newbie looking to learn how to play these behemoth units in game, stick around and we'll be discussing some concepts for deeper play as well as the basics so that you can do most effective during your battles as an elephant player. Some of the topics we'll be covering are what consumables you should be bringing to battle, how to properly engage infantry by cycling your stomps, and also how to support your team as an elephant player. We'll also cover elephant versus elephant fights and elephant counters that you should be wary of or knowledgeable of if you're not an elephant player and want to look how to take down these monstrosities on the battlefield. Let's talk consumables. So my consumable of choice is the imported wild apples and Aneth Blessing. Of course Aneth Blessing is debatable, but I feel imported wild apples should be used on every single elephant you have from tier 5 up to tier 10. This is due to the increase in movement speed and your turn speed. Turn speed is most important because it allows you to react better. Let's say you're caught with your pants down and you run down and boom, right across the canyon you see some scorpions and they're about to start firing on you. You can turn around quicker, get the hell out of there. Same with javelins or if enemy elephants are approaching and you want to turn and face them so they don't start pounding you in the rear. And yeah, that sounds dirty. So anyways, let's go on. So Aneth Blessing here, it gives a lot of offensive capabilities. You've got the melee attack and the melee weapon damage increase, which is great for fighting anything. And you have some melee defense to help if you get surrounded so you can tank a little bit more hits. Bell Sacrifice, while looking very awesome, is pretty useless. I would never choose this one. Charge Deflect is irrelevant because it doesn't really do too much for you. You're going to take little to no damage from a charge. Charges are going to stun you though. And Charge Deflect won't help against that. Let's say Heavy Infantry charges at you. Your elephant will, no matter what, get hit and stumble back a bit. And this is so that, let's say, counters can move into position or the infantry can swarm you and pop something such as Vengeance. And the other useless perk is the plus 4 morale. First and foremost, I have never seen an elephant route in the entirety of playing this game. And unless an update comes, it's going to remain that way. Even if you stack Warcry and Fear, that elephant isn't leaving the battlefield until it's dead. And having said that, blinders make your elephants unbreakable, and if elephants are already unbreakable, then this is a completely useless perk. Never take it. Down payment could be used if you want to make your elephants a little bit more tankier. It gives plus 11 body armor and a plus 5 melee weapon penetration damage. The thing is, I would tend to take Aneth Blessing over it because it has, again, a useless morale perk, whereas Aneth Blessing offers three useful perks. So, Elephant Wine. This one is something that you can use for the elephant battle, but you really have to pay attention to your ability sequence. If you don't have gore, it's going to be a little bit more simple, but if you do have gore, here's how the ability queue should be. Determination, add portus, stomp, gore, and then elephant wine. And you have to keep in mind you're going to be cycling too with your stomps on the elephants. So if your micro is good enough, definitely take it. It'll give you the edge in those elephant fights. But if you want something a little bit easier, take Aneth Blessing. It makes elephants a little less micro-intensive. Now, Missile Remover, I find this one to be useless too because of its short duration. Maybe if it had a 10 second duration, it'd be a bit more useful. But the fact is that by the time you use this, remove the volley of, say, Javelins, you're going to be hit by another volley. And then you're going to have that same speed debuff. Unless you want to sit there and accrue a ton of javelin volleys like a retard on the battlefield, which if you're doing that, you put yourself in a bad position to begin with, and you need to reconsider how you're playing your elephants. Looking at payday, this one could be beneficial as well. I see benefits in traversing the field of battle quicker and maybe some elephant fights, but in terms of elephant fights, I would just take the elephant wine over that if I was looking to be an elephant slayer. And second, the movement speed is great, but elephants are already very fast. With Force March and Stampede, you can traverse the battlefield at a, an incredible rate of speed. And lastly, this one, while I don't think I'd ever bring it, I do see some fun in utilizing it, especially if you're a Hasdrubal elephant player. And that in itself is a rarity to begin with. What you could be doing is debuffing the enemy, buffing your allies, and since elephants are very poor at blocking any flanks, since they're a single unit entity, let's say your allies get flanked, you can pop the Tanit Banner and help them endure that rear flanking penalty. 
So that's it for consumables, let's move on to the next part of our guide. When it comes to engaging infantry with elephants, many elephant players just like to use a strategy I call click and forget. This is terrible, especially if you're blobbing up all three of your elephants on one to two enemy infantry units. The reason being is your elephants could be better utilized elsewhere. So let's take a brief look at this scenario here, and I will show you why I am effective with my infantry engagements. So let's slow this down here. If you see, one thing I did is I stomped and then I walked through, causing increased damage against these heavy Roman infantry units. Of course, there are javelins here, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to stay on them and keep them engaged. While my micro is not perfect here, it is effective enough to win the battle. And again, if you notice, my elephants are spread. Um, some of this is for a poor micro. This number three unit here, he shouldn't be spread out to the right that far as he's getting hit. But again, as you see here, I'm stomping, I'm using my gore ability, which also sends units flying, and I'm just making sure to stay on these javelins as well as get back into the battle against these swordsmen. So let's uh, fast forward again. We've got some more carnage. And again, if you look, I'm just hitting, and that one I should have walked over, I walked over there. And this is just a rinse and repeat. You need to constantly be walking over units. Now, I want to get to this portion here. We've got some spears in the battlefield. And a spoiler alert here, but it's not too important. They're actually going to come up and try to engage my elephants, which is a stupid move. And I don't mean that in an offensive manner to my opponent here. I just mean that you shouldn't be engaging elephants with hoplites and expect to win, especially if they have support from Germanicus heavy infantry. So again, here we go. Let's kind of watch this engagement. So I tried to charge through. Charges usually don't work when you try to go through heavy infantry. But if you look here again, let's see. I better do it. This guy's doing it. I'm walking over their bodies and I'm getting more damage accrued. Uh, lastly, really quick to end this here, when you stomp, you don't want to get a full surround. A lot of players will stomp and then let the enemy infantry surround them. I understand microing to this point can be a bit tedious, but you want to get the outer flanks and attack from the rear or the sides where they don't have a full surround on you. And that is key. So I believe that covers the basics. Just to rehash, it is stomp, walk over them, and then try to move outside of the blob so that you're not fully surrounded. Quickly, I want to add that when you use your ability at Portis, it should be when you see something such as a huge infantry blob that we see here. You have a strong feeling that the infantry player is fully committed to fighting you toe to toe. Very poor move unless he has vengeance and you don't see them running anytime soon. If these were, say, Miltiades spears, using my Adportis might be a bad idea. And I did forget to say that you should always be utilizing Determination, which is my ability down here that I have and the E hotkey. We do have a hotkeys video if you'd like to check that out. But that's it, that covers quickly. Again, you want to be using your Determination whenever possible, and Adportis only in a scenario where you believe that the enemy will not be retreating important things you can do as an elephant player is push. It's a very effective support role and right here in this clip we see an excellent example. This was sent to me by Selnik and we also have another clan member of ours, JP, Entropy, and Don Fernando. So as we can see we're just having these elephants here tank shots and continue to push forward. They're essentially ignoring everything. There are some counters here on the field such as javelins but those are being pushed back effectively. What this does is it creates pressure and a lot of less experienced players will begin to crumble. Micro mistakes will occur and that's when the gaps will open up for your allied cav or your allied infantry to either clean up after you or maybe catch some missile units unguarded. So this again is a very effective role for elephants to use and we'll be looking at another role they can uh, utilize and support and that is just pushing missile units. So again we see my elephants they're pushing this flank here they're pushing the enemy back and I noticed that the enemies have a lot of slingers. Now if you look back here my ally Nox Dolder he's got two archers and a pikeman unit. So I want to kind of clear this area out so he can be more effective and do more damage with his pikes and archers and not have to worry about the slings. So as you're gonna see here and this guy's vengeance, I'm gonna get out of that. 
but I'm just going to continue to walk and push these slingers out. And similar to pressuring the enemy, what this does is it can push literally missile units to a position where they have no support, such as they are where they're at now. And then you can see my allied cav come in, and they're going to clean them up pretty easily. And yeah, I got all that vengeance. But yeah, there we go. Not the best charge, but again, the idea is illustrated pretty well of what you're trying to do in terms of pushing enemy missile units away from targets that they would do a lot of damage to. And slingers are something elephants push very well because if you face them frontally, their little rocks don't do too much damage to your elephant. Gaining vision for your team as an elephant player should be one of your priorities. While all players should be going for the mid tower on maps such as Alpus Grea, you being the team tank should definitely be going for it. You can essentially take whatever comes at you except pikes in this scenario or an intense amount of artillery fire. So as we can see here, I am pushing and I'm going to attain and hold the flag for my allies. This scenario I also push back the entirety of the enemy team and they're a little too afraid to advance. Keep in mind too, you can do this on maps such as Hadrian, Hadrian's Wall. Just kind of poke your head out, take the center and keep vision for your artillery. The biggest thing that's going to be a nuisance to you in this scenario is enemy artillery which can and will push you off of these key strategic points. So as an elephant player, I like to say that this last support role we'll be covering is the Saving Private Ryan role. This is where you just go balls deep and you push an artillery nest. Usually you'll be taking either a ton of damage trying to do this or you'll die. But the hopes are that you'll create enough space and push that artillery nest back so that your allies can advance. So you see here I'm just trampling these stakes, that was pure luck. There's another stake wall right here, I'm just going to walk straight into it. And again there's another one here and I see these, these stakes, I'm just going to continue pushing. And of course we see the artillery battery and I'm taking a tremendous amount of damage but they've moved out of position. And that's what we're wanting is to get these guys the hell out of here so that all my allies in the mid, well my allies that were in the mid wouldn't be fired on by these machine gun artillery. And here we see I didn't under I underestimated this po uh, position and I put my elephant in a bad spot. I'm dealing a tremendous amount of damage with some of my abilities, but Dumbo's gonna go down, and that is all she wrote. Okay, so we're getting into the fun part now. That is elephant versus elephant fights. First of all, let's cover a few things. As an elephant player, you shouldn't be seeking elephant engagements unless you see an opportunity where you clearly have the advantage. The reason being is as an elephant player, it's almost always a Pyrrhic victory when you go and engage another elephant player. Now, that is not to say that you can't get a clear advantage and come out on top. One thing to realize though, if you are using a non-premium elephant or not the tier 10, then you should probably stay away from guys such as Melkart. We see here he has a gore ability. This has a cooldown of 20 seconds and a duration of 2 seconds. It gives a tremendous increase to your melee weapon damage and your melee penetration damage. So essentially, Melkart elephants get one badass strike that deals a huge amount of damage and could quite frankly kill you if all three of them used at the same time on your elephant. So as an elephant player you should be cognizant of where the elephants of your enemy are at at all times and I finally see them in this position here where I can get advantage. So my first elephant charges in and it sets up with a stomp. Didn't stun because he got counter stomped I guess. And I position these other two on the flanks and let's, let's pause really quick here. So will it show me? No, it will not. So elephants have a frontal cone of attack. And if you look here, these guys have him. This looks like a gangbang. Poor Dumbo is not going to be feeling good in the morning. But my advantage here is that these two elephants are on the flanks and will literally be attacking from the rear, dealing an increased amount of damage. So let's kind of watch this quickly. So we get a stun off. I don't know if that was me or them. Stun that elephant, cycle my other stomp, stun those two. I should be doing my gore, that was my gore ability, did a lot of damage. I'm gonna come in with this guy, gore again, boom, kill two. And then this last one is just going to get shoved. I don't wanna say that, that's a little, little raunchy, but let's see it, boom. So, again, that was a Pyrrhic victory. Well, let's show you. Die, sir die there we go but in the end it was 
tier seven elephants against my tier seven elephants, and I came out on top with one left. Now we need to look though at the ability cycle. This is a proper ability cycle if you're doing things correctly. Stomp will be the first thing you do with at least one elephant, whereas the other two you'll cycle determination and add portis. I always use add portis in elephant fights. If I didn't use in this one, I was retarded. Now, after that, I've cycled these two. I'll be looking at my other two elephants to cycle in another stomp. You don't want to use stomp all at once. That's the worst mistake you can first make in an elephant battle. Second, if you have the ability gore, you want to be pressing that ability button now. And third, if you choose to bring elephant wine, which is debatable, but if you choose to do it, that will be the last option on your ability queuing list. Of course, you can charge in or stampede in as your first option to get a position that is superior to the enemies, but that is completely contextual and varies from situation to situation. Well, uh, let's, let's quickly look at a few other examples or a couple other examples. These ones are ones where I don't do so well, and you can learn a lot from that. All right, so here's some really sloppy elephant play on my part. I've been caught with my pants down by the player here. I'm not going to try pronouncing his name because I'll fail. And I am running away as fast as possible. Now, I do know I have my allied elephants up here, so I'm looking for him to support me. But I'm just getting pelted in the ass by these missiles here. He's stampeding to catch me. And things just aren't looking good. So my ally does come, though. And in elephant versus elephant fights, of course, numerical superiority is a big thing. I got a great little charge here, and I got in the rear. And now I'm just trying to run for dear life with this guy, but it looks like he might live kind of doubtful. And again, the whole time I'm just getting pelted. This is really a bad position for me, but an even worse position for the opponent here. But we have to ask ourselves in this scenario, who is the true winner? So what's going to happen? Let's watch a little longer. Okay, so one of my elephants goes down. The enemy elephant, he gets another hit off, does he? Yes, he does, and boom, there he goes. So, in this engagement, two allied elephants died, but look at the tremendous amount of damage we took here. This is most definitely a Pyrrhic victory, and I would actually say the opponent came out on top due to the state that our elephants are in. So let's kind of fast forward here because I have a clip I immediately want to show, a little redemption clip. So, I got, got lucky there, and I managed to get out of that fight. But I just noticed that there are some more elephants here attacking our artillery nest. He's doing a great job of the role I showed you earlier, and that's just breaking up enemy artillery. And he's done just that. And if we look though, he's engaged, I believe, with... Is that Julius Caesar Swords? If they were popping their ultimate, he could not be stomping. That's a great way to counter. But he sees me now coming, so he's thinking, okay, I gotta, I gotta kill this guy. And I know that my advantage here can be in positioning and the fact that I have allied support units that will kind of blob up and mess with it. So boom, I get a stomp off. He just stomp canceled. He actually got the better of me there. But he's getting stunned because he's getting hit in the rear. So here we go. Let's see what abilities I use. Fully add Portis, Determination. Those guys killed him in the back. I'm going to get off, I believe, my elephant wine here soon. Um, I think that was a gore, kind of hard to tell here. And again, so we stomped, canceled each other out. He just used an elephant wine. And here we see the power premiums. I did a gore to elephant wine cycle there, and I killed two for one, taking again a tremendous amount of damage. Well, that just shows, of course, this is the mail cart elephant. The mail cart, or the tier 10, I want to reiterate, have gore, and that is a huge, huge ability in terms of elephant fights. So let's go to my last example here. So in this last clip of elephant versus elephant, we see that I'm trying to push and take the tower. I do realize that there's cav here where I can't do a lot of damage to cav. I can push them away. And my ability gore does do a fair amount of damage to them. So let's just see how this pans out. So again, I'm trying to do my support role of taking a tower for vision. And I get my first look at the elephants. I see they're tier six. And I think, okay, I've got an advantage here, especially because I'm setting up behind the wall and can position better. Well, I see him turn, and boom, right as I get the tower, I see that there's some tier 8s coming. Let's see how this kind of plays out, what decisions I make. So, he's about to catch me, and this is where I make a decision to engage. 
and you can see the the error in my ways. So I get off my stomp, I tried to cycle but I was in the wrong direction. Get off a th uh, third stomp, again I am cycling my stomps which is great. A little late on hitting my ad portals and determination. And we see I'm getting sandwiched right here. And this is just going to be, that's, that's a term that is used often in elephant battles in this game. Of course my ally here, great support, came in and did a vengeance to try to help me. And to recap here, I engaged great against these tier 8s. I actually would have won. But I clearly saw that there were some other elephants in the back, and they just came and flanked me and sandwiched me. So this is where numerical superiority definitely plays out. Again, it's a Pyrrhic victory, but look at how unscathed this uh, tier 7 or tier 6 elephant is. And that's a win on his part for sure. Great play, especially having lower tier elephants. The 8 here... He's not coming out probably too happy, but that just shows that when it comes to elephant fights, it's all about positioning. Uh, numerical superiority can be helpful at times, but as we saw in the last clip, the elephants with numerical superiority can also take a tremendous pounding haha, from the enemies. So let's move to our last section that we're going to talk about quickly, and that is counters to elephants and what you need to be wary of and also what you should be aware of so that you can kill them. All right, so we're at the part that you've all been waiting for, especially you elephant haters, and that is how to counter elephants. This is crucial information for people who are playing elephants and people who are playing against them. Now, we already have a video on how to counter elephants where we covered a few of the basics, and I'll be linking down in the upper right-hand corner on an info card. But what I want to demonstrate here is the effectiveness of javelins against elephants, especially Caesar jabs here that have both VD and the ability canceling effect of Vici. I believe these are one of the most powerful ways to counter elephants. And we see here he's done a couple volleys and it's already brought me down tremendously in health. And here he could have got off another volley but he's a little hesitant. And let's kind of fast forward a bit. And of course right, right at this moment we're gonna see some poor micro on my play but I do wanna point out that it takes one, two volleys to down my elephant. So even if I hadn't have had poor micro, he still would have been a great counter. Javelins are excellent at countering elephants. Of course, they do require support. A lot of people forget that. So here I'm trying to think, you know, I'm not playing the smartest here. And of course, Frank Merck, or Frank Met comes in, blocks my elephant. I try to break through, but we see the Caesar jabs at play as they melt my elephant off the battlefield. Second to javelins, we have another hard counter, and that is going to be, you guessed it, pikes. And as we can see here, I really just got messed up. This Leo Pike player managed to catch me, and we see the elephant go down at a quick rate. So, to counter this as an elephant player, the correct action is to stomp through the pike line and just move to the other side, as opposed to trying to turn through it, which just will almost always cause you to die. And quickly we'll see how I do it in this instance to kind of counter it. Of course, I'm going to die anyway, so let's see what happens. So he drops pikes, I stomp, they get knocked back, and I walk through. And that's how you effectively counter your counter. Of course, if you get caught by a pike phalanx, you're in a bad situation to begin with. And one thing to note, that is a Leonidas pikeman. Kinane pike players can do much better and can usually catch you unaware, drop pikes, and kill you in seconds. So be wary of javelins, pikes, and of course scorpions and artillery, which if they catch you in the right place at the right time, they will drop you like a fly as well. Aside from javs, pikes, and light or heavy artillery, there are a multitude of counters to elephants. Things such as Germanicus infantry utilizing vengeance, or Alexander Cav using anvil to block and almost completely immobilize advancing elephants. And this is a big deal because elephants really struggle to deal damage to cavalry models. And unless they have the gore ability, most times that cavalry can keep them held in a position for an extremely long period of time. You can combine this with the fact of using Arminius Cav and Fury to have an increased amount of DPS and really whittle down the HP of these tanky beasts. Or you can use Vercingetorix with Defiance. And things to keep in mind too are if you are fighting against elephants, you don't have to engage them. You can always deny them the engagement. If you're a light infantry bar player, just run. Same if you're a Mil Miltiades hoplite player. And again, as an elephant, 
player, you need to be wary of these counters and wary that you might overextend and run into a counter elephant such as Melkart with the gore ability or the tier 10 elephant with the gore ability. And there also exist again other elephants that may have the elephant wine consumable which I consider to be a consumable built for countering elephants. But the main thing to keep in mind is that teamwork is what will kill these beasts. Teamwork is required. Javelins unsupported will struggle against elephants. Pikes unsupported, the same thing. And that's ultimately what it boils down to. But the great thing is, if you really concentrate and focus in on how to kill an elephant, they can drop quickly as we've seen in a few past examples today. So with that guys, I just want you to all be aware that this guide hopefully answered all of your questions about how to play elephants, how to counter them, what mindset you should have as an elephant player. With that, do leave a comment. What did I miss? How do you play elephants? How do you counter them? And of course guys, do like and subscribe. My name is Roman Ronan and I am new to this channel, but I intend to have more videos come out in the very near future so that I can help Arklamon create more video guides in a comprehensive fashion. And a big shout out to my clan Old School, they helped me attain some of this footage. Selnik was the one who directly provided me the replays, but there are a multitude of others in this clan who have helped me in both acquiring the footage that you saw with my squads as well as telling me about, hey, you know, check out this replay, it's a great one. So with that, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you all on the battlefield here shortly.